guys, today is the last video for Vlogmas. I have posted a long form video 25 days in a row and I thought what better way to end it with than with one of my favorite videos to do my speed reviews I put a lot of time and pride into my speed reviews I love to come back and update you on products that I have thoroughly tested and put through the ringer and I've done a couple of speed reviews recently they were a little bit more themed based off of hauls this one is just a bunch of random products I think like 38 products pulled from my to try drawer and I'm happy I can finally clear the drawer out because there was a lot in there that have been sitting in here for a long time so I can have more of an empty drawer for the start of the new year when I get back from my parents house so with today being the last day of vlogmas for the next week obviously I am going to be working very minimally at this point I've already been at my parents house for five days already so I will have probably a couple uploads you know just to keep the lights on but I'm taking a break up until the new year I believe I get home January 3rd so that's the update on that. Thank you to those of you who watched all 25 days of Vlogmas. If you did, let me know in the comments. And if you didn't, that's still okay. I did upload a lot, but thank you guys so much for joining me on this one. Put a lot of work into a Vlogmas this month, Jose and I did because we were going on vacation to see my parents. So we were uploading every day and prepping for these last few videos. So I'm excited that it's over and we can all enjoy the weird awkward time between Christmas and New Year's. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into these speed reviews. Starting off with the only foundation I have in today's speed reviews, which is the good old Too Faced Born This Way foundation. I got this in a PR package. I loved this in college, but I wanted to come back and try it again a few years later. And it is what I have on my skin today. It's a true medium coverage. I think it looks really great. I still think it's a great everyday foundation. The only thing is this one is a bit temperamental. I've actually discovered since cream products are a lot more popular than they were back when I used this in college, this does disagree with with some cream products and will peel so I need to be careful with that but for the most part I still have been very much enjoying this and it's been really nice to kind of come back and use it like I said it's a medium coverage but it still feels very lightweight on the skin and I would say it has kind of like a semi matte finish but is nothing too drying I can see why this was so popular years ago I still think it's a really nice foundation I only have one concealer as well this one is from Merit Beauty Beauty. This is the Minimalist Perfecting Complexion Stick. I have mine in the shade Ochre. I really, really, really like this. I love the versatility in this product. When I do use it as an under eye concealer, I will say it's not my favorite under eye concealer, but it is so versatile that I'm okay with it not being the best concealer I've ever used because I love using this for spot concealing. Almost as foundation on no makeup makeup days, like I'll just put it where I need a little bit of coverage. It blends out really easily, so I've been enjoying this product a lot. I think it's really great for those minimalist makeup lovers. And yeah, Merit, I think, did a great job with this product. Oh, and by the way, what I mean by, like, it's not my favorite under eye concealer is sometimes I do look at my under eyes and I feel like the product itself might look a little dry, but it's not bad at all. I just have some liquid concealers that I prefer for the under eyes, but I like this because it's in a stick and you can use it a whole lot of different ways. Okay, on to powders. I have a few. The first one is from IT Cosmetics. So this is the Bye Bye Pores Translucent Powder. When I like this, I really, really like it. This has good days and bad days. It depends what you put it with. If you put it with a foundation or a concealer it doesn't like it can look kind of dry and almost oxidize the product underneath but if you put it with products that it does like like for example the Too Faced foundation and the Merit concealer today lovely super blurring super soft on the skin it is extremely finely milled so be careful because if it gets in the air it can choke up a little bit and cough but I overall I think it is a nice powder but this is not one that I would experiment with new products I love it with products that I know I love it with so that might turn you off but when it's good it's really really good and blurring you guys the other powder I've been testing is the Laura Mercier secret brightening powder for under eyes I also very 
much enjoy this. I don't think it's like a top tier powder, but it certainly gets the job done. It is a little bit lighter than my skin, so I do use it to brighten. It's solid. I can't say anything bad about it, but it also isn't one that I'm head over heels for, but it's still great. And then the last powder that I have, which is very similar to the Laura Mercier, but it's Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Airbrush Brightening Flawless Finish Powder. So this is the airbrush flawless finish powder formula in a more translucent brightening shade so it's not truly translucent but it is a little bit more sheer anyways I really do like this for finishing up the face so I don't love this to set I will set it with it but there's other powders that I prefer to set with and then I'll kind of put this over top to finish off the makeup to brighten and I think it's been very very useful for adding that dimension to the face these brightening powders really became popular this year I didn't really use them too often but between the Laura Mercier and the Charlotte Tilbury I felt like they've been a great addition to my makeup routine just for that finishing touch of depth to my face. A couple cream contour bronzery products. So the first one that I have is from Merit. This is the Bronze Balm in Clay. I really, really like this. Again, if you are into that cream makeup or minimal makeup look, I think you will like this. I really love the shade of this. It has a little bit more of a glowier finish than I prefer for my makeup to have. So I find that if I pair it with maybe a little bit more of a matte base product this kind of stands out and it's not very flattering but if you apply it with more of a glowy products on your face to go with this it looks really beautiful the quality of it's really great it's not always the finish that I'm looking for but when I am looking for a glowy finish this is a beautiful product blends out really nice I think Merit did a great job with this and then I also have the lower east side skyscraper cream bronzer I got this in a boxy charm and I actually quite like this one a lot you can see the difference on my face at least I can in front of the mirror where the mirror's more glowy this one's more matte never heard of this brand before but I have really been enjoying this cream bronzer I think it's a beautiful color and it blends in with ease on the skin then I also have this one now this one has been I feel like in this drawer for a long long time this is the makeup revolution contour and highlight stick in the shade light actually in one of my previous speed reviews with the Ulta haul I picked up the shade medium and I still didn't love the shade of that but I love the formula of this but the light shade is way 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 too light for me the contour shade is very close to my skin tone the highlight shade is really really nice but yeah I don't know their contour shades are really off even the medium was too light for me but I love the formula so much that I did purchase it in another color, so that should say something for it. If you're very fair, you might want to look into this though. It blends really beautifully. It's just a matter of can you get your right shade? But this is a nice product for Makeup Revolution if you can find that correct shade. On the powder side, oh my gosh. Okay, so there's a couple more products from this launch. Well, I guess technically just one, but I'm only going to talk about the trio. This is the Kaleidosynthesis. <laughs> the Kaleidos Symphony Contour Trio. I've been using the shade Medium. I've been loving this for shaping my nose or setting my face. I always love a good matte highlight powder as well. Again, as kind of that finishing touch just to make my face look a little bit more sculpted. The formulas here are very, very beautiful. They blend great. Kaleidos did a phenomenal job with this. It's definitely a basic, kind of less exciting product to have, but it's one that you'll find yourself reaching for a lot because it is so useful. So I've been enjoying this launch from Kaleidos a lot. They did also launch, I think like single colored highlights. I still need to decide which shades of those I like before I put them in a speed reviews, but the shade medium of the trio is wonderful. Okay, I have a lot of blushes to talk about, so prepare yourself. The first one is from Merit. This is the Flush Balm Cheek color in the shade Beverly Hills. I like this, but I don't love it. So I don't love this when I have powder on my face. I find that it does move the powder around, but this is just a nice color to throw on for everyday really light all cream makeup, which I know a lot of you ladies and gentlemen are doing now. It's very, very trendy. For me, I, I like a little bit of powder. 
it's very rare that I'm going all cream but if I am I do like this it, it feels nice just with the way that the packaging is to get it on the face but if I have on a full B I find that this kind of disrupts the stuff underneath but it is a gorgeous color and there's a time and a place to use this but for me it's just not this typical makeup look that I do where it excels I also have this Tarte blush I believe I got this in a boxy charm as well this is the cream blush in the shade peachy sunset beautiful formulation I do have another shade of this love this formula I mean this compared to the Marriott when I did the cheek by cheek this one is so much better it definitely has a little bit more coverage to the face it's a little bit more of a matte finish but this one is definitely more heavy duty for more heavy duty makeup and I don't know Tarte can be hit or miss for me but this is a formula that I really feel like they nailed another really great cream blush that I tried is from Rose Ink this is the lip and cheek color in Heliotrope so this one is an interesting consistency. I'd almost argue it's kind of like a cream to powder, not super powdery, but it has that consistency. Another really beautiful blush formulation, not as maybe glowy as some others, but they offer some beautiful shades in their line. And if you're interested in this, it's a great formula. Then powder blushes. So the first one is from It Cosmetics. This is the Bye Bye Pores blush in the shade Je Ne Sais Quoi. The shade is gorgeous for every day. And I really do like their powder blush formulation. It's quite lightweight on the cheeks. It's not super pigment packed, which I think gives that or blurring effect. So this is a really solid blush formula. I've never heard anybody talk about it, but I love the color and I think the formula is really solid. Now this one, unfortunately, I don't love. This is from NARS. It is the Rising Star Cheek Palette. So this is the cheek palette from their holiday collection. I just don't love this formula from NARS in general. They have a few different blush formulations. This big gelée formula that's in this kit I don't really love. I mean, blush is blush. I can get it to work. It doesn't look horrible on my cheeks, but I feel like a lot of other great blushes have just launched this time of year that I'm much more inclined to reach. So this has not been an all-time favorite of mine. It's fine. I can get, you know, it, it does the blushing on the cheek. It's not hard to work out or anything. I think the tools that you use need to be a little bit more specific, like a synthetic brush is going to pick up the color better than a natural hair brush. It's fine, but it's definitely not getting much attention because I love so many other formulas a lot more. What I do love, this is one of the ones that has been beating out the NARS, is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Beautifying Face Palettes. I've talked about these a lot, so I'm not going to talk about them too much, but I have been using the shade Fair Medium more, but the Medium to Deep I've also been loving. These are a beautiful formulation for a glowy cheek. You don't need to think about what colors you want to use. I've been reaching for these often. It's such an incentive to have beautiful packaging as well. So these are a really great blush palette. And I guess, you know, the formulas in here aren't mind blowing, but the overall look is so stunning that I know when I reach for it, my cheeks are going to look blushed and glowy and beautiful. And I feel very similarly about with my love for the Pat McGrath Labs Divine Blush and Glow Cheek Palettes. So I have two of these as well. I've definitely been reaching for the shade Divine Rose a little bit more, but both are really great. It's just Divine Rose has a couple shades like these two right here are some of my all time favorites. So these are I said the Charlotte Tilbury right wasn't a mind-blowing formula. Pat McGrath in here, this one does have a mind-blowing formula. So they have four of their blushes that are in her original like line. So I love those. They're very high quality. They're not as shimmery as the Charlotte Tilbury. So it's a different look, a different vibe. And then they also have a really beautiful smoothing highlight formula. These ones are really great as well. It's like, I don't know which one I prefer because I like the Charlotte Tilbury for a truly glowing goddess kind of cheek but when it comes down to it I do prefer the formulas of the Pat McGrath but they give a different look you know and they're both great and I recommend both <laughs> and then I also have the this one has been a while in this drawer Natasha Denona my dream cheek trio blush and highlighter palette so you have kind of a cream to powder blush a cream highlight and then a powder highlight really beautiful cheek that's curated for you it's less exciting to me than the Pat McGrath or the Charlotte Tilbury palettes, 
but this one still does give like a really pretty fresh glowy kind of look to it and Natasha is known for layering the formulations kind of situation she did a great job with this and then I do have a highlighting balm and I don't normally like products like these this is from Merit in the shade Citrine not my style of product. I don't love it, but it does perform well, I would say. It applies best by putting your finger directly on the product and then pushing out in, into the skin. And I think it looks really pretty. But for me, you guys, I've always just preferred the look and application of a powder highlight. And I'm not reaching for this over a powder highlight. If you like a balmy kind of cream highlight, I think, I think you will like this one but it's not something that I'm gonna be reaching for all of the time. And the last complexion product that I have is from Catrice. This is the fixing spray. It's supposed to be waterproof, transfer proof, all of that good stuff. I don't know. I'm always more inclined to reach for my Charlotte Tilbury. That one I know makes my makeup last longer. I don't know about this one. I haven't noticed anything too special. I would say generally speaking though, Catrice has really great setting sprays. They have a couple that I really love. I don't know if you would stand my makeup wear or not. So this one hasn't stood out to me. And the spray is, it makes my face really wet. And that I also don't love, so I haven't been as inclined to reach for it. Moving on to the eyes. The first product that I have is for the eyebrows. This is the Shu Ui, Shu, <laughs> the Shu Uimura Brow Sword Naginata. I actually did a sponsorship with them on this product, and that's because it is stinking incredible. It gives off the perfect amount of color. It's not too creamy and because of the tone of this and the application it makes my brows look better. It's a very interesting shape as you can see but surprisingly very effective. I very much enjoy doing my brows with this and I think it makes my brows look really nice. Gives very natural hair like strokes. So this is a bomb pencil. Another pencil that I tried, I guess it's more so of a pen slash marker. This is from Benefit. This is the brow micro filling pen. Originally I thought I wasn't gonna like this. I was like this is totally a gimmick but honestly I like it more than I thought I would. I got the shade light brown so I think it's a little bit more natural in the brows. It does a really nice job. It doesn't spew out too much product. It doesn't look too intense in the eyebrows. The proof is in the pudding as you can see with the demo. So I've been pleasantly surprised by this. Am I reaching for this over other brow products? No, but I was still pleasantly surprised by it. I got a couple of brow products from Lawless sent over to me, so I've been playing with them. The brow pencil is called the Shape Up Soft Fill Brow Pencil. It's okay. It's a bit thick for me. I prefer the It Cosmetics Brow Power. I think they kind of have a similar shape, but the it Cosmetics does it better. This one is just okay. I've been using it because it's been in my to use drawer, but I'm not head over heels for it. And likewise with the Hold Up Stop Set Creamy Brow Wax, again, it's fine, but I have so many other brow gels that I would prefer to use over these. I would say it has like a light to medium hold to it. I feel like it does kind of thicken up the look of my brows, but again, I just prefer some other brow pencils. So they're definitely not bad, but they're not my favorite. And then moving on to eyeliners because I don't put eyeshadow palettes in these videos. I have this Kaja Wink Stamp Wing Eyeliner Stamp and they came out with a longer shade so it's supposed to give longer wings. I am not a professional at using this. I can see how people would enjoy this for a guide but my troubles with these is I get them uneven. I've been getting better at using them and it actually encourages me to create a different wing shape than I normally do if I I'm just like free handing it. So I actually like the shape of the wing it gives me, but it is it's a little troublesome to get my wings even with these. It also does come with like a normal eyeliner pen. This one is really, really nice. It's quite precise and it's super duper black. So overall, I do like this, but I am kind of holding my breath a little bit when I'm getting the wing stamp on. And then I also have this eyeliner from Crunchy, which is an organic beauty brand. This is their highliner. It's okay. It's a little bit stiff and dry, so I have to press a little bit harder than I prefer for my eyeliner. So after this point, I'm probably not going to be reaching for this often because it's a bit uncomfortable to use, but it does last a long time, so that's great. And if you're looking for an organic pencil for the eyes, here you go. You have it here. And then I also have this eyeliner, which is very interesting, my opinion on these. The 
Maybelline Tattoo Studio. So they sent a bunch of different colors for Halloween. I've only used the orange and the blue. Hated the orange, had to go really hard on my waterline to get color, just wasn't worth it. But then I tried out this Arctic Skies blue and I love this blue, it lasts such a long time. I've had this on in my waterline for like almost two hours and it has not faded. I don't think I've worn blue eyeliner in my waterline since I've been in like middle school. But wow, it lasts forever in the waterline and it's really easy to apply and I was able to blend it out. So I don't like the orange, but I really love the blue. Maybe the brighter colors are better. I have one mascara from IT Cosmetics. This is the Lash Blowout. I really, really like this mascara. I'm not working with much lash-wise, and I recently took a break from using Lash Enhancing Serum, which I know my lashes are gonna shrink back. It's a long story why I stopped. But anyways, <laughs> this right here is how they make my lashes look, which is really, really good, uh, because I think my lashes have shrunk a little bit. But I really like this, and I don't like a lot of mascaras, and I think the packaging is so cute. It's like a little dry dry bar brush. So yeah, I think this one made my lashes look good. That's kind of all I can say about it. And we're moving on to the last category, which is a bigger category than usual, the lips. So I have this lip liner that I've been using from Bare Minerals. This is the Mineralist Lip Liner. I love this color in the shade Cherish Rose. It's such a nice winter plum kind of shade. And the formula is really nice, not too creamy, not too dry. Underrated lip pencil. I like this one. I've also been using this lip set from an older collection. This is the ColourPop Lippy Pencil in Formosa Cafe, and then the lipstick in the shade It Girl. It's my lip color that I'm wearing today. I've been using it a lot. Love their lip liners, love their lipsticks. I feel like their lipsticks can fade a little bit fast, but I don't mind because it's so cheap and it does feel quite high quality. I love the pre-made lip sets that they make, like the lippy kits, because then I got a perfect match right here. I've also been using this lipstick from ColourPop a lot, the shade The Lounge, again, from an older collection. It's a very nice peachy shade. I feel like this one has a little bit more sheen, therefore making the product not last as long on the lips. So I like the one in the set that I got a bit better. But yeah, I've been using this one a lot as well. As you can see, it's a pretty kind of nudie peach shade. From Trixie Cosmetics, I've been using this liquid lipstick in the shade Junebug. Unfortunately, not the biggest fan of this. It's a bit too watery and thin and it looks watery and thin. It, it's okay if I have a lot of lip liner layered underneath and all of that and mixing it into another color, but using this on its own or with just a simple lip line, it looks really drying and thin and uneven, so not my favorite. From Rare Beauty, I featured this in my favorites, so you know it's good. This is a Rare Beauty Dewy Lip Balm in the shade Thankful. This is the perfect everyday fall, and I would say winter color, so it's a dewy lip balm with color to it, so it does have a glow to it. This looks phenomenal underneath or on top of a brown lip liner. I didn't have a brown lip liner in today's look, so it looked more pink, but if you put this with a brown lip liner, it's hydrating. It's still great for every day, but it gives that depth that's perfect for the winter and the fall, and it has that pretty kind of like lip glossy glow, and it's an all-in-one product, so super duper nice. This is an older product, but I tested this again years later from Too Faced. This is the Lip Injection Extreme. I don't feel like it's too painful. Sometimes I'll use this before makeup to give my lips a little extra plump, though I don't think it does like that much, but I mean, come on. This is not magic in a bottle. <laughs> Nothing can really plump these lips up, but it's been making me feel a little better about myself, so I don't think it's extreme plumping by any means but I like the tingle that it gives I love the tingle of a lip plumper so it does a little something but not that much and then I did a sponsorship last month or early into this month with the brand Hero which is a Korean makeup brand and oh my gosh their lip products so good they have this lipstick formulation that is so incredible. It's really lightweight and blurring on the lips. Very popular to like the K-beauty trends. Feels like nothing is on the lips. So I love this formula. And then they also have kind of like a matte lipstick trend or it's called the Sensual Powder Matte. It is a powder matte liquid lipstick, but it's not drying and it's really thin and gives a blurred look and you can apply just a little bit 
for that blurred Korean beauty trend or you can build it up. So it has a lot of versatility. Again, super comfortable. And then they also have a lip gloss formulation, which I think is my favorite from the brand, the Spicy Nude Gloss. This fills in the line of the lips. I have more colors than this, but <laughs> I just pulled a few to show you. Um, and I just wanted to update you that I still am really, really loving those lip formulas. Really incredible. I like Korean beauty. That's amazing. And then lastly, finally, I can update you on the My Dream lip set from Natasha Denona, which includes a lip liner, a lipstick, and a lip gloss. So the lip liner is great in the shade Natasha. I already had this and yeah, it's nice, lasts a long time, really creamy. The Natasha lipstick, I already owned previously before the collection, but this is a totally different color. The Natasha from the original collection is more cool and gray based. This one is more mauve -y. They are not the same. I thought I could throw away my old Natasha and get a fresh one, but they're complete different lipsticks. So keep that in mind, but it's a beautiful color. And then lastly, the lip gloss. I'm not in love with this lip gloss formula, just in general, but it goes perfectly with the combo. I don't think the lip gloss formula is bad, but it's not my favorite lip gloss formulation. But overall, it creates a really pretty cool mauve lip that I think, you know, if you like cool toned eyes, you like purpley eyes, you will really like that set. And I do like overall, put together the Natasha Denona lip formulas. So still really good. The only thing I would probably pass on is the lip gloss, but the other two items are very nice. And there we have it, you guys. Those are 38 speed reviews of a bunch of different makeup products that I wanted to update you guys on. Again, huge thank you to those of you who have stuck through Vlogmas. I hope you had as much fun as I did, but I am ready for a break. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.